In Module 5, we're going to be looking at items called two-way tables. A two-way table consists of two categorical variables. And we're trying to see relationships between the variables. Now, in a typical two-way table, you have variables in columns. So, for example, in this table here, we have males and females. And besides the gender, we, the other variable we have is daily soda consumption. Whether a person drinks regular soda on a daily basis, diet soda on a daily basis, or no soda on a daily basis. Now inside we have what are called cells. So if you look at the number 96, that means there are 96 men that drink regular soda on a daily basis. If we look at the number 58, that means there are 58 females that drink soda, that drink diet soda on a daily basis. Now you notice we have a total column and we have a total row. Those are called the margins. Now in order to fill in this table, we can fill it in using addition and subtraction. So for example, to get the number right here, okay, what we would do is we would take 168 minus 96 and that would give us this number right here for female regular soda drinker. How would we get this for no daily soda? Well, 96 plus 36 plus some number has to add up to 167. So we would take 167 minus 96 minus 36 and that would give us the value for here. So similarly, you can fill in the table that way. Okay, so here we see the table as it's been filled in. Now notice the total column. 96 plus 72 is equal to 168. 96 plus 36 plus 35 is equal to 167. Now look at the grand total here, 336. So there are 336 people in the survey. 167 plus 169. If we add the column values up, we get 336. And if we add the row values up, 168 plus 94 plus 74, we get 336. So now the two-way table is filled in. Now we can start to get some probabilities. Okay, so what is the probability a person drinks diet soda? on a daily basis. Well, we're not looking at just men, we're not looking at just women, we're looking at all of the people in the survey. That's the grand total, that's 336, that goes in the denominator. Out of all the people in the survey, how many people, men and women, drink diet soda on a daily basis? Right here, 94, that goes in the numerator. Let's look at the next probability. A, pro a person is male in the study. Well, how many people are in the study? 336. How many of those people are men? 167. So 167 divided by 336. Now notice, for those two probabilities, the numbers in the numerator and the denominator all came from the total row or column. That is called a marginal probability. Okay, now look what I just did. I circled the column that says total. Notice that's in red. And I circled the row that says total. That's in red. And where the two intersect is at the number 336. 336 is the grand total. Now, the, the numbers in red, both column and row, are called margins. A marginal probability is when the numbers come from the margins, and the margins are the totals. A marginal probability is the total, one of the totals, row or column, over the grand total. We do not use any numbers from the inside of the table for a marginal probability. We only use 
the numbers from the totals. Now, let's look at the next probability. A probability that a man, that a participant is both a man and drinks diet soda. So how many participants were there? 336. That goes, that goes in the denominator. Now, how many men are, how many participants are male and drink diet soda? Right there, 36. That's the interior of the table. So when we come back to this probability right here, 36 over 336. This is called a joint probability, where you're still looking at the grand total, in this case, all of the participants, but the numerator is not one of the totals. It's a non-total value. It's the inside of the table. How do you know usually if what they're asking you for is a joint probability? The key words, and again, this is a rule of thumb. It's probably accurate 95% of the time, but of course, with the English language, there could always be times where it's not accurate. The key words are and and with for a joint probability. All right, let's look at another type of probability. The probability that one of the participants drinks diet soda, given that the person is a male. Given the person is a male. That's a condition. We're not looking at all 336 people here. We're only looking at the males. Now, that's the, I could be asking for the same probability by saying the probability that somebody drinks diet soda for a person who is a male. Another way of writing this, probability that somebody drinks diet soda, now you see that vertical bar? That means given that. The vertical bar means given that. So the probability that somebody drinks diet soda, given that the person is a male. So here, we're not looking at all participants. We're restricting ourselves to the males. And out of the males, how many drink diet soda? So let's go back to the table. And how many males are there? Well, you come right over here. It's 167. Notice, we're not using the grand total of 336 anymore. We're only using the number of males for the denominator. How many of the males drink diet soda? 36. So we come back down to our problem right here. And the probability of drinking diet soda, given the person is a male, is we had 167 males and 36 of them drink diet soda daily. This is called the conditional probability where you're not looking at all of the participants. You're only looking at a subset. And conditional probability, the denominator is a total but not the grand total. And the numerator is an inside value. Key words that can indicate it's a conditional probability, given or who. All right, let's look at the next thing. The next thing we're interested in are false positives and false negatives. Now, let's look at the example of a woman. If a woman goes and gets a mammogram done, okay, if the mammogram comes back positive, okay, that's something we hope doesn't happen. That means that there's an indication of breast cancer. If the mammogram comes back negative, which is what we're hoping for, that's an indication of no breast cancer. But not the results are not always accurate. A false positive means the test comes back as positive, saying the woman may have breast cancer. But in reality, it's false. She doesn't have breast cancer. That's a false positive. A false negative is where the test comes back negative, indicating the woman does not have breast cancer. But in reality, unfortunately, she does have breast cancer. So those, that's the difference between a false positive and a false negative. So now for our last problem, we're going to look at constructing a more complex two-way table. So suppose the mammograms are used to screen for breast cancer in a particular city. Now the following information is known. 1% in the females of the females in the city of breast cancer. 
if the female has breast cancer, the probability the mammogram is positive is 90%. If a female does not have breast cancer, the probability the mammogram is positive is 9%. That's a false positive rate. Now, assume that a female has a mammogram and the result is positive. She asks her doctor about the probability she has breast cancer in light of the positive mammogram. Surprisingly, only 21% of the doctors in a study answered a question like this correctly. Now, we're going to see what is the best answer. The probability she has breast cancer is 81%. Out of 100 females with a positive mammogram, 90 have breast cancer. Out of 100 females with a positive mammogram, 10 have breast cancer. Or the probability she has breast cancer is 1%. So let's come up with a two-way table. Typically, what we do in a case like this is, since they don't tell us the number of people to examine, we're going to come up with a number. And we typically put a large number for the grand total of people to be 10,000. Why 10,000? So we don't have to mess with very small decimal numbers. Okay, now the first thing is, where did they come up with this value 100? Now remember, earlier in the problem, it said 1% of, we're going to assume, 1% of the females in the city have breast cancer. So, if you take 1% of the 10,000, so it's 10,000 times 0.01, that gives you 100. Okay. Now, where did we get this 90 over here? Well, it says that 90% of women that have a positive mammogram do have breast cancer. Okay. So, how many women? How many? Oh. So, here. Okay, so now let's go back and we see that if a female has breast cancer, the probability the mammogram will be positive is 90%. So how many people have breast cancer? 100. 90% of them will have a positive mammogram. So 0.90 times 100 is 90. How did we get to 10? Well, we have 100 minus 90 is 10. Okay, now, how do we get the 9,900? Well, 10,000 here minus 100 gives us the 9,900. How do we get this value right here? Well, it says that of the people that do not have breast cancer, the mammogram will come back positive 9% of the time. So 0.09 times 9,900 is 891. And now, how do we get this? 9,900 minus 891 is 9,009. And now we can add the columns. And now we have all of our figures. Okay, let's come back to our question. Assume a female has a mammogram and the result is positive. Given that she has a positive mammogram, what is the probability she has breast cancer? So, how many people have a positive mammogram? 981. Out of those, how many have breast cancer? 90. 90 out of 981. So, that's roughly 1 out of 10 or 11. So, let's come back and look at our choices. The probability she has breast cancer is 1 out of 11, 9%. I'm sorry. So the answer right here, out of females, out of 100 females with a positive mammogram, about 10 have breast cancer. So the answer here is C.